Hello folks, um, this is uh, video three of the sit-down interview um, with uh, Sergeant Sanders, Detective Du Bois, which is part of the Manchester uh, Police Department uh, Union Rep, and Douche, Detective Douche Brown, um, who is a uh, dickhead that I filed a complaint on for moving me way too far away from a traffic stop, but then I filed a complaint on him initially. And then I got arrested for filing a complaint on him, um, which is highly illegal. And I have a, a I'm ready to file a 1.2 million dollar lawsuit against him. Um, this is video three, and uh, this is the audio of that sit down of his take. Um, if you look at uh, video video two, um, I played some of the instance, um, some of the uh, footage in which he's t speaking about and uh, I left off with him saying that his training um, his prior training lets him know about people like us and how we like to agitate how we like to say we're there for police accountability but there we're we're there to agitate so basically as a preconception and a pre notion and bias automatically before he even knows who I am or what I'm all about um, and he's collectivizing me, illegally collectivizing me in a group, thinking I'm something that I'm not, which uh, leads to um, a little bit of conflict of interest with his own oath because they're supposed to deal with all situations with impartiality and without bias. That is completely biased. And if they're being trained to do this, that training needs to fucking stop. And this is why cops are bad because they want to preconceive. And that's not good detective work um, now that he's unemployed and being charged and, you know, he's a douchebag. He, he's a criminal cop and I'm glad that Chief Willard fired him and I'm glad that they're pressing for charges against him on things he did on and off duty. Um, according to, I, I played all that in video one. Um, you can see that on WMUR Channel 9. Um, or what he's being looked at and some of the things he's doing and why he's not on the police department and why they dropped the charges on me. But this is the rest of the uh, the audio. I'm going to be making commentary in the middle because I think this guy's uh, uh, an, an exceptional liar, deceiver, and crooked cop. And I'm glad he's no longer a cop. Very open about doing that. Now, again, I didn't know him prior to that, but I was just going, you know, based on my prior experiences with these folks, that that was going to be a problem. Did, uh, at any point, did you guys, um, any of you, you, uh, you specifically, prevent him from taping by shining a light in his face or stand in front of him and, you know, physically prevent him from taping? No, uh, when I approached him, I told him... Okay, he said no. Let me back this fucking tape up. Sergeant Sanders specifically asked him, have you or any other members tried to flash a flashlight in his face to block his view, okay? Detective, let me back this up a little bit because the cop that's behind this asshole did exactly that. You don't need to be so close to me. Yeah, I do. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go all the way back to that driveway right there. There he goes. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I'll see you in court then, sir. What? Hey, there he is. Yeah, flash the flashlight in my face. For freedom of recording you, that's what you're doing. I don't care if you record me. You're going to do it back there. Let's go officer safety. Officer safety. Yeah. So you let those people go right by you. I had them on camera. You didn't let them move away. I didn't even know they were there, sir. Five Keep going. Villages. Keep going. What's your name, sir? Fashion? It's Detective Brown. Detective Brown? Yeah. Well, I'll see you soon. Can't wait. I have it. Can't wait. He said he can't wait. Okay, man. You did it. It's all you. It's all you. What a fucking dickhead, dude. They, they didn't flash a flashlight in my face, and he did. He told under oath that he gave me his badge number, and he didn't. Wow. Um, you know, you hear it in the video that I, I told him I, I don't have an issue with you taping. I, I mean, I said right away my main concern was just safety, safe, officer safety for us and then obviously for everybody else that was there. Um, I don't even think I had a flashlight on anything else with you at the time. Um, 
and then I just simply told him that um, he was more than welcome to take all he wanted. He just had to do it from you know what I deemed was a safe distance. Okay. Um, I'm wa in watching the video. It looks like you know you're you're talking with him, and and, and uh, you guys are walking together when you tell him to stop moving. And it seems like he's relatively compliant. He's walking backward, but he's you guys are still having a an exchange about you know why do I have to move? I'm you know. Um, during this, uh, this time when you guys are walking, uh, Mr. Phillips claims that you use your right hand to shove him, to shove him backwards. At any point did you have any physical contact with Mr. Phillips? Nope, none whatsoever. Whether it was uh, intentional or inadvertent, we, we never had any, any type of physical contact at all with each other. Bullshit. So you never shoved him? Nope. Uh, what about um, your chest? pushing him at all. You never had any physical contact with him whatsoever? Nope. Um, we, when we were walking, I was obviously walking uh, forwards towards him. For the most part, he was walking like in a backpedaling fashion because he was videotaping. And um, for the most part, he was off at a 45 degree angle to my left. So like he was like on my left side of my body, be the right side of his body. Uh, um, and maybe I, I think probably the closest I would have got to him at one point was like we were within like a couple feet of each other the entire time. Um, at no point were we like you know face to face or. So if I told you that yeah. he, he claims that you were uh, at some points uh, no more than four to four inches from his face, would that be accurate? Yeah, that'd be inaccurate. We're definitely never that close to him. <laughs> right here in this shot, at three minutes ten seconds. In the New England cop chases, JP gets harassed and assaulted by a detective douche. Um, at 310, he's less than three and a half inches from my face. An act of lawsuit against you. Right there's where he hit me. Right fucking there. So at 311 or 3 minutes 12 seconds is when his right hand bumped the left side of my shoulder and pushed me. What a lying sack of shit, man, this dude. So you, how, what's the closest you've ever come you came to him? I'd say I was within like a foot of him at one point. <laughs> right there! That shot right there! The yeah, Four I, inches! I two inches! No way we were we were four inches apart. It's way too close. No wonder you no wonder you're fired. Alright, and in one part of the video, um he starts uh, making statements that he's gonna place you under citizen's arrest. Mm -hmm. Um and he says that you threatened him by uh, making a statement like, put your hands on me and see what happens. Well, what's, what's the rationale behind that? Essentially, he was um, exerting some kind of authority over me, I guess. Um, the, the problem is, again, based upon my past experience with these folks, is that they sometimes do actually believe that they possess some sort of authority to do these things. Okay, did you hear that? With my training with these folks, when you try to when I try to put them under citizen's arrest for assault, they 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 think they have some type of authority over us that we don't normally that we don't have. But in reality, according to the Constitution, according to his oath, we are in authority over you. We are in authority over you. Every fucking cop in the United States is under the general public. Under, under, under. Get it through your fucking cocksucking thick skulls. You have no authority. None. That's, that supersedes the public or the U.S. Constitution. Period. Um, in his case, obviously, he's being confrontational. He's making all these claims about, um, you know, laws and this other thing. So my thought was when he made that statement was that he was legitimately going to follow it up with some sort of physical actions where he was going to touch me. Um, like an attempt to take you physically into yeah, custody? Yeah, like an actual attempt to place me into custody. I mean, being a policeman, I know when I tell somebody that they're under arrest, that means I'm going to touch them physically and, and physically restrain them. Um, you know, so my belief was dealing with him is that he potentially did really believe he was going to do that. Uh, so at which point I simply told him, you know, we, yeah, I, I forget exactly what I said, but something effective, you know, 
it's going to be bad if you touch me or you know something. Put your hands on me, yeah. see what happens. Yep, something along those lines. That was more of a, of a warning, not so much as you're threatening him. You yeah, and even when I made that statement, he immediately said that I was threatening him, and I think I even clarified. I said, "No, I'm not threatening. I'm just I'm just warning you that if you thought about doing that, it would would be good." Would it be good? Yeah. It's not good that you, uh, you're charged, being charged criminally now, not a police officer anymore. <clears throat> they're moving some papers around at the moment. Uh, how did it eventually end over there at the, uh, the car stop? Um, I know the vehicle was towed and the suspect was... Uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, the, Police. the uh, target of the investigation refused consent uh, for searching his car, uh, which is fine. So he was released on foot, and then the uh, car was removed uh, via tow truck and brought to the station. And what happened with Mr. Phelps? How did you contact with him in? As soon as he uh, was at the driveway where I told him that, that I, I wanted him to go, uh, I turned around and walked away. Went back to the car stop? Yep. And, uh, you know, as I was walking away, you know, he was shouting profanities and and, you know, do whatever to try to bait me to get back. Do you remember what he was, was shouting? He shouted some of the effect of, uh, like I was a, a douchebag maybe, and some, I don't know, I, I honestly wasn't even paying attention. So I can't, could care less at that point, but. The other officers that responded to the scene there was, I, I think it was Officer Callahan and. Uh, yeah, there was some patrolman. The only one I knew was Officer Callahan. Did you guys call them to the scene? I did. I, I radioed for them to come. And what was the purpose of that? Because I knew that, you know, he was going to be a problem, and I just wanted them to stand by with him, um, keep an eye on him. He knew I was going to be a problem, even though I was Did you give them any other uh, instruction, like to physically restrain him, or to arrest him, or to do anything like that, prevent nope. him from filming, anything like yeah, that? Yeah, no, I just called him over there, I said that we were on a stop, and we were having a problem uh, um, with someone videotaping, and that uh, we were just looking for, you know, someone to stand by with that person, um, just just to uh, provide cover for us, so we, we, so we can focus on what we were doing. But never gave them instructions as to how to handle nope. him, as far as like, Preventing him from filming or arresting him or no, no, restraining no. him or anything like that. No, no, I, I, don't, I didn't talk to them when they got there. We were already back at the, uh, the stop. Um, but yeah, no, no time that I tell them that we needed them to stop filming. I, I mean, I again, I personally could care less if he wanted to film us. I didn't have an issue with that at all. I just wanted to make sure you know everyone was safe and included. When you say everyone was safe, I mean, what is your feeling on that? Like, if he's if he's out filming the car stop. His initial spot to start filming, he said you didn't feel as though that was a safe spot. You think he would have been in a, could be put him put in harm's way if he stayed there? Yeah. If something were to unfold with the suspect of the vehicle? Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, the unknowns of who you deal with on the car stop. Um, you know, it is a drug investigation, drugs and guns hand in hand for the most part. Now, with that being said, we deal primarily, we street crime deal with street level stuff, but that's not to say someone doesn't have a gun. Especially now where, you know, we've had that law repealed where you're required to have a permit. Anyone can have a gun, including the gentleman with the camera. And, you know, obviously things can break bad at any point in time um, on both ends. So whether it's the bad guy we're dealing with that decides to, you know, um, you know fight with the cops or do whatever he's going to do. And, and or, um, what's his name, Free, Mr. Free, Phillips. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips. I mean, notoriously, folks involved in that activity are, you know, free staters or cop blockers, whatever they refer to themselves. They notoriously carry guns, and, you know, given the fact of their disdain for the police, you know, if we were to... There's another collectivization right there. He basically automatically assumed I carry a gun because I video record and collectivized me as a free stater and a cop, and cop lock. Um, I, at this point don't belong to either one of those fucking organizations and he doesn't know a goddamn thing about me and if he knew anything about me I'm not overly a fan of guns having a gun owning a gun having one in the house am I an advocate for the second amendment absolutely do I think every single member in, in the community should own a, a gun in their home yes but do I agree with someone having a fucking arsenal when they have like three, four, five-year-olds? No. And if you do, do I agree with them posting it on a Facebook page and letting the feds know, yeah, you're the first house they're going to come after? No. 
I think it's stupid, I think it's idiotic, and I think if people own something, they should keep it to themselves, and they should keep their mouth shut, and they should keep their business to themselves, and, and they need to mind their own fucking business, and let and accept people with their own views, choices, and, and you know, safety concerns, or whatever. But this guy is all over this bias collectivization and putting me and labeling me as, as a group, which is a, a direct cause of action with discrimination. Um, he had no right to move me from where I was. I was walking on the sidewalk with three other people who says that, that he didn't see when he literally had to maneuver around them to get to me. And he calls them to, to come near me because he knows about these people in his prior training. I mean, just this, this audio alone, I could sue him on three things. On violations of the right to record, freedom of speech, freedom of press. Um, and he moved me to a situation where um, it took me away from gathering information that's at, of public interest. And I am going to attack Manchester with every law I can think of, with everything that I hold dear and stand up for. Because this guy is a corrupt cop, there's a reason why he's unemployed now, and a reason why they're charging him. Because he is a liar. He also said he gave me his badge number and then the video clearly showed that he didn't. Um, there's a bunch of lies here. Um, saying he was four feet away when he was actually two inches. I can literally smell like his breath. And Dude, Aaron Brown, seriously, brush your fucking teeth. And second, shower please. Because you smell too. Um, it came to a point where we were going to be arresting the target of our investigation. Now all of a sudden Mr. Phillips decides that he's not in agreement with that and now he wants to get involved in some shape or fashion and now we're dealing with him and he's armed. You know, so it's a, it's a, basically it's just a totality of everything going on is I want, you know, mitigate all the, the officer safety factors we can so we're not dealing with, you know, three different sets of problems. You know, when we try to just to focus on the one, so that was—I mean—that was my main goal with moving him away. You know, as far as preventing him from taping, I mean, I personally could care less. They can take away. You know, I mean, we're not up to anything nefarious or nothing. We're not supposed to be doing up there. So, do you know, did Mr. Phillips did it have any contact that night with anybody else uh, in street crime? Mm, not that I know of that night. I mean, I think he didn't speak to anybody other than you. No, he definitely didn't talk during that time. He didn't and on the, on the video, the only other people he spoke to were the, were the uniform, uniform officers that were at yeah. the uh, towards the end. Yeah, yeah uniform police officers. I think he called into the OIC, uh, so he talked to me on the phone. But were you there when you heard him talking on the phone? I was there. I wasn't with him. Though. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. You couldn't hear that conversation going on. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? Uh, no. The biggest thing is, um, from from my end of it, anyways, if. I just respectfully request that if, if there's enough evidence to support Mr. Phillips being charged with either unsworn falsification or something along those lines, I just respectfully request that the department explore that option to the fullest. Um, we noted. Yeah. Uh, if you have any other questions, we'll... Uh... Did you hear that? Um, it keeps downloading. I don't know why, um, but he... Aaron Brown said... Um, if this is found, if any evidence is found that it was falsified, um, that the department will charge him to the fullest. And his, and his, and his girlfriend, Sanders, Sergeant Sanders, basically says, duly noted. Like, the preconception of it is already there. Like, they already determined in this video, and in this sit-down, that they were going to charge me for filing a false report on a cop, even though it's a, vi a clear violation against... Um, the state of New Hampshire versus Allen case. Um, you're allowed to lie in the state of New Hampshire under protest when it comes to filing a complaint on a cop. I wasn't even lying, and he has no, no evidence to support that he didn't touch me. The video doesn't clear, clearly see him touching me, but it clearly sees him lying that he was four feet away. Clearly sees him lying that he didn't see anybody because he maneuvered around him. Clearly sees him, heard him lying about him giving me his badge number when he absolutely did not. Um, and lied about a flashlight in my face. Um, there's a bunch of lies in this video uh, in contradictory to my, to my uh, video. To this audio to my video. Um, 
But this training thing that he keeps mentioning about collectivizing me in this group of free staters and the training he had with these type of people and their, their, their false sense of authority over us and blah, 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 blah. All those are, are I want, that's why I did this video. I want people to realize what cops across America are being taught. Okay? Activists and people exercising their rights are not taught to the cops as them exercising their rights. Even after the Glick case, and even after the Attorney General's office sends a memo to all the police departments saying, you will get sued if you violate the right to record. They have a clear fundamental right to do this because it's of public interest, no matter who they are. Now they're discriminating against me, saying I'm something I'm not, and acting and enforcing something they're not supposed to enforce because he has a preconception and pre-notion with not being impartial at all in a situation where he really didn't need to. Now if he's seen any of my videos, I got, I got over 700 videos going after police in like seven years, almost seven years of doing this. And I have never carried a gun. I have never threatened a cop. Um, you get in my face, I'm going to bully you back, absolutely. Because if you're a bully f douchebag cop, like the Concord video, I'm going to get in your face and I'm going to tell you you're an asshole and you have no right to you know, come up to me. Now these cops in Hillsborough County, Manchester PD, Bedford, State Police Troop B, are all bastard and cocksuckers. And let me tell you why I'm calling them names, because they like to arrest people that want to watch them. And they are under the rhetoric and training and bad habit of planting stuff, lying on police reports. They're even hitting people in, in cars off duty and taking off. And then you have this, detect, this other Detective Murphy getting arrested for criminal activity on duty, a detective. Okay? And then you have this douchebag Brown, douche Brown, get, getting charged. And then you have Sergeant Kibbe over in Claremont being charged by a statey for lying on a police report. I mean, where does it end? And we're in the wrong because we show up with a camera. So this audio basically shows a ton of things. He wants charges which it sounds like they already predetermined it anyway, which ended up getting dropped because Douche Brown here ended up getting charged and arrested himself. But they collectivized me. I know with my previous training how to deal with these type of people. And these type of people are known to cause issues and bait. You know what? Seriously though, i never seen a free stater do aggravative stuff like in my whole time of being here and I was here before the free staters were and those people on on cop chases that don't know what a free stater is look up free state project um, state of New Hampshire and it will tell you what a free stater is and you have your different cliques you have your Christian free staters but the, predominantly they're all libertarian um, you, and you have a group that you know, is 420 friendly and likes to get drunk and inebriated half of the time and they're useless and they can't even get themselves out of bed. Half of them don't even have, half of that particular group don't have jobs. See, I'm collectivizing right now. It don't sound too good when you collectivize people. There might be like one or two that actually act like that, but I never ever seen any of them, for that matter, act in an aggravated manner towards cops. You know what these guys do? They go out with fucking signs. They do sign waves and do peaceful protests and they live by the NAP, which is the non-aggression principle from, um, you know, Rothbard or whoever fucking came up with it in the libertarian movement. Um, you know, I don't know too much about it because I, I really don't like indoctrination of any group. Um, <clears throat> I do what I do because cops beat the shit out of me back in 2007. They broke bones and... Uh, it was caught on videotape, and if it wasn't, I'd be in prison um, for a long time if it wasn't caught on video. 
and that's before I knew anything about YouTube, following them, my rights as a videographer, any of that. Um, that's why I do what I do. I got hurt by these bastards. They lied. They covered for each other, and now and then they ended up paying the price because it was caught all on video by accident, actually. So there's a lot of problems here that we face as activists and as liberty activists um, and videographers, cop chasers, high desert community cop watch, um, the auditors, um, cop watch, peaceful streets, even the, the some of the cop lockers that are around um, in individual chapters <clears throat> and uh, you know sovereign citizens they get a bad rap because a couple of them went out of their minds and now they're collectivized as being gun-toting psychopaths because of two idiots that went into a mall one day. And that's the problem. You gotta know that police oath themselves with impartiality. Look the word up. They're not supposed to have preconceptions or pre-notions about going to a certain situation. This guy apparently did. And he illegally removed me. And what did he do at that traffic stop? They let the guy go. Because he didn't give consent to a search. But in, in process of that, they tow his car so they can wait 24 hours for a warrant. Even though that's illegal. They stole his car to wait for a warrant. Even though they didn't have a, a warrant to seize the car to begin with just so they can plant stuff on them while it gets to the police department. How can there be any way of accountability there when you can't stick up for your own shit? Obviously the guy's a liar and he's involved in criminal activity on and off duty like, like you've seen in video one and in video two. Um, Aaron Brown is no longer a detective in the Manchester Police Department and he's being charged with multiple crimes on and off duty and they took the poor kid's car that I went there to protect and video record to begin with got removed from the situation not only that I was surrounded by three uniform cops so he can keep me there so he can plant lie steal and do whatever he needed to do so I don't watch him and the public can't see what he's doing that's the problem with this that is the very fucking problem with this this whole situation. I'm going to attack it, I'm going to go after it, and I'm going to update everybody on this channel on what's going on with my filing, my ex parte motions. I'm going to PDF them, put it on the Cop Chase's Facebook page, and keep everybody up to date. Now, on a, on the, on a second note, um, there's been a lot going on here. That's why I haven't been out lately. I got full custody of my kids, so... Um, they're four and five. I'm going to keep their names uh, um, undisclosed at, at the moment. If uh, you know me personally um, and you like what I do, you can PM me on the Cop Chases Facebook page and I'll let you know about my kids and whatever. Um, I got nothing to hide. But uh, I was broken into on March 23rd uh, by a guy named Justin Cole. Um, he has a lengthy history of ill behavior. Um, so I filed a, a, a superior court order, a restraining order against him, which is an injunction uh, for injunctive relief to keep him away, even though he was, you know, was charged for doing it. On April 23rd, he shot at two people on West Street in Key, New Hampshire, and was involved in a 10-hour long standoff. You can look it up, Justin Cole, Key, New Hampshire standoff on April 23rd. Um, he was charged with... I believe three to four felonies and he was recently indicted um, and I have that on I have that hearing on audio um, the hearing that I went up against him he was actually in shackles and um, being an idiot but um, it's not something I normally put on the YouTube channel because it's uncop related but he did cause a victim um, <clears throat> so I took it upon myself to take him to court myself instead of going through uh, the cop shop because it never helps calling the police. For the most part they're okay and keen because they've been watched and prodded by free staters, me, cop watches, peaceful streets. There's a ton of groups that watch them here. So they 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 have trained by us basically and you know um, they're pretty nice and 
gentle when they need to be. But when we're not around, that's when shit happens. And that's the problem. They need to be watched all the time um, for accountability purposes. Because uh, essentially when you have, wear a badge, you're a douche. Um, they become uh, instantaneously come, become dickheads. So I won um, against Justin Cole, and it was granted for a year. He's currently in the HOC, which is the House of Corrections here in Cheshire County. You can look that case up. Um, since I'm mentioning it, I might as well say the case number. Um, case number for that is 213-2018-CV-00045, and it's Phillips versus Justin Cole. Orders requested uh, for a restraining order, and the uh, the order was a hearing was held on today's date. The plaintiff's petition is granted. The court finds the plaintiff's allegation and testimony to be credible. See record. Mr. Cole, for the most part, did not deny material allegations because he has related criminal cases pending, stemming from the same allegations. In this case, he arguably invoked his right to counsel and remained silent in response to direct questioning. In a civil case, such as such an invocation or refusal to answer can be used against the defendant. The court finds that without a restraining order, the plaintiff may face a reputable harm through threats and intimidation by the defendant. The court notes that there is also bail restriction on the defendant, so this order imposes no greater restriction on the defendant than those already in existence. The restraining order shall remain in effect for one year. And he's also charged for, um, um, I believe there's a DCYF case because when he was breaking in here, he actually pushed my four-year-old daughter and she hurt her elbow. And this happened at 2.30 a.m. Because um, we heard something in the window and the douchebag tried to crawl in. So there was a lot going on um, to update you on everything and there's a lot going on um, in some civil cases as well um, if you want to get the PDF of most of those it's on Cop Chase's Facebook page and I want to say good morning to the state it is now 1241 a.m. I'm going to bed and I want to say peace and thanks for to all my fans I'll be popping out some videos in the next few weeks um, and I'll uh, post the video of me uh, helping the cops look for a, a wounded bear um, I thought it was funny because the guy brought a shotgun, um, a 12-gauge pump action in the woods, and uh, the other cop brought an M a, full, a full M4, um, which I thought was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. So uh, you'll get a kick out of that video, but there was nothing interesting that happened Saturday night. We were in communities that were kind of low-key. I thought it was going to be heavy because, you know, the first, second, and third of the month, everybody gets their checks, their welfares and uh, drug addicts um, you know normally tend to cause a ruckus around those days so they ramp up the police prison between the first and the ninth um, of each month in New Hampshire um, but we went to the wrong communities and my ride wanted to hit these uh, these certain cities and towns and we had a pretty good night though um, so I'm gonna sign off here enjoy and um, during my filings and stuff against Manchester PD, and I'm suing um, Aaron Brown himself, and to let the people know, in, in Glick vs. Conniff, it, it specifically outlines that police officers can be sued if they uh, violate a fundamental right. Um, so they can personally be listed. And that's in the Garek vs. Began and Ware PD case, and Glick vs. Conniff. Both of those are U.S. First Circuit Court of Appeals decisions. Um, and um, Texas v. Hill, New Hampshire v. Hill, both of those, two separate cases, but both Hills. Um, and uh, the New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire v. Allard, check out that case. And uh, um, the city of Keene v. Robin Hood. Um, allows us to have no buffer zones um, so you can check all those cases out um, if you want to do some digging or just watch the video alright peace I'm out